Do narcissists know they are being abusive? That is the million dollar question. And I'm going to tackle that answer right now. Hi everyone, my name is Shanine Megji. I'm a transition coach. Welcome to my YouTube series on toxicity is not your destiny. My mission is to help people navigate toxic relationships and environments in their lives from a biblical, practical, and spiritual perspective. So if you like this video, take a moment right now, click on the subscribe button, click on the bell, because every single week I'm going to be bringing you a new video to empower you in navigating toxic relationships and environments in your life. So now let's dive into the subject. Do narcissists know they are being abusive? On one level, yes, because otherwise they wouldn't have the intelligence to know to hide their abusive behavior, which is something they often do. Narcissists, especially covert narcissists, are like Jekyll and Hyde personality. They show one charming face to the public and they can turn into a tyrant behind closed doors with the people who are closest to them. So on one level, narcissists know very well that the way they treat you would be considered unacceptable to the average person. They would never treat a stranger or an acquaintance or a colleague or a friend the way that they treat you. So narcissists understand very well the consequences of what their abusive actions could lead to. They could be disliked, rejected, retaliated against. Definitely a narcissist would not succeed in getting anywhere in life treating other people they come into contact with the same way they treat you. So because of that, they are very calculating, exacting, and covert in the ways that they behave. Narcissists understand human behavior well enough on a cognitive level. They've observed and studied people. They have this uncanny ability to read people. So they know exactly how to build just the right type of rapport with people to get what they want. You need to understand that the reason that narcissists hide their abuse is not because they believe they're wrong. It's because they feel they have to condescend to other people's inferiority, their lack of enlightenment, their weakness, their fragility and sensitivity and stupidity by hiding aspects of themselves that they know full well are going to cause people to react. And they do this because otherwise it would not be profitable for them to get what they want or what they need in relationships with other people. So on the one hand, narcissists know very well what they're doing when they're being abusive. It's 100% under their control, calculated and intentional. And yet on another level, they don't have a clue what they're doing. They are completely unconscious of the fact that they have a faulty thinking issue and a faulty ungodly belief issue, which is born out of their narcissism. Narcissists have a very high sense of entitlement. They expect utter compliance to their needs and expectations all the time. They are grandiose in the way that they think of themselves, which means that they view you as inferior, as property, or as an extension of them. On top of that, they just, they don't self-reflect, but they blame shift when anything goes wrong. And worst of all, they don't have heartfelt empathy. They're known to have this cold empathy or this cognitive empathy, which means that they can have this understanding on a head level of what you must be feeling or going through, which could masquerade as empathy, but the reality is it is not genuine empathy because they don't share in your pain at a heart level. So because a narcissist is innately wired to feel entitled, to think they're grandiose, to not share in people's pain and to have an external locus of control, which is their belief that if something is wrong in their world, it is because something outside of them caused it. All of these wirings form a belief system that tells a narcissist that there is absolutely nothing wrong with the destructive way that they treat you, even though the rest of the world might call it abuse. They believe they are entitled to treat you however they want. And if you're not complying with their demands or their expectations or their wishes, or you're acting in a way that's independent from how they are, they feel totally entitled to lash out at you. 
And if that means berating, controlling, humiliating, shaming you, lying and threatening, anything they need to do to bring you back in line, they believe they have that right. The narcissists believe 100% that you are responsible for the hurtful ways that they're treating you. If you wouldn't do this, or if you wouldn't act that way, or if you would just fall in line with what they want, then they wouldn't have to resort to such measures to bring you back in line. That is how they think. Their vision of you as their source of narcissistic supply prevents them from seeing you as the unique human being created in God's image with your own unique destiny, separate and independent from them. They don't see themselves on equal footing with the rest of humanity. According to them, because they did all this hard work of investing in you at the beginning of the relationship, they feel like they have purchased you, like you're now an object. They now own you and view you as an extension of them, as their property. And that is their false sense of entitlement playing out. So for example, if you think of a child, the child understands that other toys they see in other people's houses or stores don't belong to them. So they'll respect those toys. But if the child has his or her own toy that now belongs to them, they will feel entitled to be as destructive as they want with that toy. And that is how a narcissist thinks about the people closest to them. On top of that, even if all the professionals in the world call the narcissist actions abuse, and there are books out there to define it, because of the narcissist's grandiose thinking, they honestly could not care less. The narcissist does not believe anyone else is as intelligent or as insightful as them. They frankly look down on other people, no matter how credentialed they are, no matter how much education or experience they might have, the narcissist will always find a reason to look down on such people with disdain and contempt and find ways to discredit them. Narcissists believe they see better than everyone else and they feel they can see into you better than any other human being can, including yourself, and that they're the ones that can point out all your deficiencies because they can see them better and therefore they feel entitled to take whatever measures are needed, including abuse, to reform you into their image. So this begs the question, is there hope for a narcissist to change their abusive ways? Here's what it boils down to. Unless a narcissist changes their way of thinking and their beliefs about themselves and other people in relationship with them, they're never going to change. When they're being abusive, it's not like you can resort to thinking, oh, they're just having a bad day, or they're just in a bad mood, or I just need to turn the other cheek, or I need to be more patient or more loving towards them, because these things do not address the fundamental root cause of why they are lashing out at you in the first place. Their lashing out at you has to do with their fundamental beliefs about you and about themselves. Narcissists have to be targeted on a belief level, which at the end of the day is about changing the way they think. It is about the narcissist conforming their thoughts to the full summation of what scripture really says, and not just their few pet verse scriptures that they use as weapons to justify their oppression and their abuse. It's really about conforming their entire personalities to that of Jesus Christ. And at the end of the day, that is really the antithesis of an abuser. They need to actively work on conforming their own dysregulated, disrupted personality to that of Jesus Christ, who has the perfect personality and who modeled how we should live and walk on the earth. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And that is what transformation really boils down to. Transformation can only come from a mind renewal, which is a thinking renewal and a belief renewal. There's another scripture which says in 2 Corinthians 10:5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. A narcissist would have to apply himself or herself very intentionally every single moment of every single day to take on every single thought and every belief they have one by one, investigate it, hold it up to the light of Christ, and see whether it is aligned with what Christ teaches and who he is or not. 
And if not, then the narcissist would have to replace that thought or belief with a new one that is in line with Christ and what he teaches and who he is and keep practicing the new thoughts and beliefs until they become more natural than the old thoughts and beliefs. That is what it really means to take our thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. It could be a grueling, exhaustive effort, but in due time, if they persevere and stick it out, they will have the victory. But will a narcissist do it? That is the million dollar question. At the end of the day, any person that wants to undergo a transformation will have to make the painstaking effort of taking every thought captive they have and making it obedient to Jesus Christ. They will have to examine their ungodly beliefs and replace them with godly ones and be more interested in manifesting kingdom culture in their lives over what they're picking up in their own culture. I truly believe that if any narcissist would endeavor to do the hard work of conforming their personality to that of Christ Jesus, to take their thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ, to change their beliefs, to do everything they can in their power to conform and align with Christ and his kingdom culture, I truly believe God would give them supernatural grace to experience the full transformation that's written here in the Bible. I really do believe that renewal of the mind is something that every human being can do with God's help. There's another scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, which is such an amazing promise. This means that even if narcissists who have such a rigid personality feel helpless to change because it's like a zebra changing its stripes, I really believe there's help from above to enable them to make those changes, to become their true authentic selves that Christ has called them to be, the person God intended them to be since beginning of the foundation of the world. Because we're all called to becoming more and more like Jesus Christ, we're all on a journey in that process, every single one of us. And maybe it's harder for some personalities and others to conform because disordered personalities are known to be so rigid and so unchanging. Personalities are generally unchanging. So I just believe that any narcissist that chooses to sincerely humble themselves and embrace the feet to changing their beliefs and the way that they think while putting Christ at the center of their lives automatically gains access to God's strength from above. When God sees somebody humbling themselves that way to do this work, I really believe that God's pleasure is activated and his grace flows automatically to that person. And I really truly believe that a narcissist and every human being that is a follower of Christ has access to that amazing grace. And the Bible says God gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So any person that seeks to be teachable and to do the hard work is actually taking on a posture of humility, which, as I mentioned, it invites God's pleasure and his grace. So there is definitely hope. But as I asked earlier, will a narcissist actually do this work? The problem with the narcissist is that they tend to see their personality as working very well for them because in the end, they get what they want. They can control, they can exert power, they can get things done with their way of operating. Their narcissism is their modus operandi. There's not a lot to motivate them to do the deep dive work in themselves to change and take the painstaking efforts to monitor each and every thought they have and submit those thoughts to God. Because they are so superior and arrogant, they truly don't believe they are the issue. So at the end of the day, the narcissist has to be motivated to change, to believe that their personality actually is not working well for them, but is actually the cause for all the destruction and the grief they are wreaking in their lives. So I would just say, don't hold your breath that this is going to be a quick fix or that a narcissist will change overnight. Change could take a very long time, if at all, and maybe many rock bottoms later. So I just wanna say, although there's hope, it's important to have a realistic understanding of what you're dealing with when it comes to a narcissist. If you have a narcissist in your life and you're wondering whether to stay or go, I created a video where I offer some of my insights. So if that's a question you're wrestling with, I encourage you to check it out. If you feel you need to get out of an abusive situation, I also created a video called How to Leave a Toxic Church Unscathed. Now, this video, of course, is created for people in a toxic spiritual community, but 
many of the insights in that video are definitely helpful for people who are in abusive relationships. So I would encourage you to check that out if you're in that situation. I hope these insights in this video were helpful. If you know someone who is in a narcissistic relationship who is seeking greater understanding on the issues that are at play, share this video with them so that they can get better understanding, better clarity to make right decisions. If you would like to see more content from me and have not subscribed yet, click that subscribe button and click the bell so that you can get all the alerts because every single week I will be posting a new video to empower you in navigating toxic relationships in your life. And if you liked the video, please give it a like. This just helps me to know what kind of content to produce. And if you have suggestions of other topics you would like me to cover, please do so. drop your ideas in the comment section. I really appreciate it. And this brings me to the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. Till the next time.